Christ is risen. Christos anesti. In today's gospel reading, we hear of Thomas and we hear Thomas's confession, my Lord and my God. This is a gospel reading that may come as a surprise for some of you that we read again and again throughout the year. That this gospel reading is one of 11 Eothina. These are the gospel readings that are read Sunday mornings during Orthros. That's perhaps why most of us miss them. And yet these are perhaps the most important readings of the year. These 11 readings, only a few of which, if you only come to liturgy, you will ever hear, are unlike any of the other readings. They are permeated with the light of the risen one. There is a a certain tension in them that was once described by the theologian Olivier Clément as a man who's pulling the string on a bow. In mystery, Christ often silently approaches or those approach him, searching for him, but not recognizing him. And then, like lightning that flashes from the east to the west, our Lord appears, reveals Himself, is made known to us. It leaves us as it did the apostles speechless. Because in the light of the risen one, all is changed, all is made new. And every Sunday... Every Sunday, with only a few exceptions, these resurrectional gospel readings are given to us as a gift, as a hope, as a reminder that our Lord has risen and that He lives among us. In fact, they are read from the side of the altar to remind us of the angel that stood to the side of the place where Christ was laid. They reveal to us the kingdom in its fullness. They reveal to us the mysteries of the faith and they initiate us into a new way of living. It is not hyperbole to say that the answer to every question is given in these gospel readings. And those questions that have not yet been asked, the answer I know is there as well. What do these Eothina, these resurrectional gospel readings, reveal to us? They teach us that every day on the first day of the week, every Sunday morning, we're to rise up early and bring to the place where the body of our Lord was laying our offerings. And where is it that his body is lain? But here in the church upon the altar. And the offerings we bring are both bread and wine, but our very lives, our thoughts and our concerns, our talents and our virtues, our repentance, to lay at the feet of our risen Christ. But you may say to me, we cannot come to the tomb. We cannot come to the church You find yourself locked behind doors, not because of the fear of the Jews, but because of the dangers of this virus. Do not fret. Even though the doors are closed and you find yourselves in home, he stands before you and stands with you, marked by the very proof of his love. Place your finger into the mark of the nails and your hand into my side. Perhaps you have grown tired. You have experienced pain and sorrow in life's journey. You are walking through life lost. 
like another Cleopas and Luke. And these gospel readings tell us that you do not and never will walk alone. He is with you. And when your journey comes to an end, as it will for all of us, may we remember how our hearts burned within us because it was He who invisibly walked with us. Work, labor, boredom, tiredness, These are omnipresent feelings of our modern age. Feelings perhaps once shared by Peter after a long night of fishing where he had labored and not achieved what he had desired. But he, as I hope we all may be, was humble and obedient. And in that humility and that obedience, he recognized our Lord He dove into the sea, arrives at the shore to be reconciled. These gospel readings teach us that if we have denied him in act, word, or deed through our sins, together with Peter, we can confess, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. The tomb is empty, for the day is coming when every tomb will be emptied. And we do not just learn this, but we feel this in these gospel readings. Do you have doubts? Because you have not seen, like Thomas we hear about today. Trust Mary of Magdala, who comes to us and says, He lives. Believe the testimony of the apostles, the witness of the martyrs, the example of the ascetics. And without seeing, you will still be blessed. Go to your friends, your neighbors, the strangers, and only using words when necessary, share the love of him whose love is stronger than death. Teach them to do all that he has commanded and know that he is with you. And even if you feel that God has left you, is distant, seated in heaven while you find yourself on earth, or perhaps a hell of our own making, as is often the case, let us remember the words of the angel, that as he was caught up into the heavens, so he will return. And my friends, when the day comes... When the day comes as it will, when the doors of this church are reopened, come to Orthros. Wake up a little bit earlier. See the sunrise and hear of the risen one. May we all follow the example of Peter and John. And run to the church that we might hear these most precious readings of our risen one. That we might encounter him risen from the dead who is revealed to us in the breaking of the bread. And may we all cry out with Thomas, my Lord and my God who is holy now and forever. Amen.